My name's Kim Daybell. I am a Leeds graduate, graduated about three years ago, uh, and I play para table tennis. Um, so I've played in two Paralympic Games now, and I've been in the GB team for the past 10 years, and we're trying to in the process of Tokyo. Um, and then apart from that, I graduated as a from med school and am now working as a doctor in a London hospital. I think basically my being born with a kind of a disability, so I've got Poland syndrome. Um, so it means that you, I was born without the fingers on my right hand and without the muscles in my right chest. Um, and what my parents kind of really wanted me to, to be involved with sport because I think they thought for disabled people, sport was really important. And I think it's quite easy for disabled children, especially to sit back um, and not have to necessarily be involved because of the disabilities they have. So they they pushed me to kind of try lots of different things. I did swimming, football, badminton, tennis, table tennis. Um, and table tennis was just the one I enjoyed the most. So when I was sort of eight or nine, I started training properly because uh, I showed a bit of talent and I started training at school and then moved on to club level and then eventually national level two or three years later. Um, I, I just love the sport in general. And, and, and like I said, it was kind of ingrained in me from a young age that, that sport was really important. So that's why I did it. And, uh, and that's why I stuck with it, really. I mean, absolutely. I think because I, I played able-bodied, I started as an able-bodied athlete before I started uh, competing on the para side. I didn't think I qualified for the Paralympics because because it's more of a it's a minor what you'd call a minor disability. Um, but as I started to get older, I just noticed at the age of 13, 14, I was kind of one of the best players in England then. But the the other guys around me started pulling away a little bit, and I think just you know the weakness and imbalance, muscle imbalance especially. Um, started to kind of affect the sport and, and that's when I was approached by Paralympics GB a few years later and said you know you should be involved with this um, and we want to kind of push you to, to try for London 2012. I think I mean generally for me just just balance was the main problem um, but by playing sport I think I probably it, it hasn't affected my life as much as it would have. It's made a lot stronger my coordination's a lot better um and I think if I, I hadn't been involved with sport if I wasn't an athlete fitness physique I think I'd have a lot more problem um, and you see that with Paralympic athletes in general they're very, uh, and a lot of them were told by doctors you know that you might be in a wheelchair anything by the age of 25 um but because they're so physically fit and because they do so much exercise they're all kind of beating all the odds basically which kind of shows how important sport is and exercises for, for disabled people in general absolutely i think for disabled people in general confidence is a big issue um obviously you you grow up a bit different to everyone else with a if, especially if you've got a visual physical disability um and for me what i found was that sport gave me that confidence and i think you know for my parents that was that was really important to them. They they never wanted me to grow up thinking I couldn't do things, which is why they, they pushed me into it. And I think in general, uh, when I'm what well, you know, when I'm in the table tennis hall, when I'm in a sporting arena, that's when I kind of feel the most confident in myself. Um, and by achieving and doing well on a kind of the, the big stages in sport, uh, it's really kind of helped my confidence in general, because I think disabled people do struggle with it, um, especially if for whatever reason they feel different or they look different and they get treated differently um and I'm a, I'm a big believer that you know you, you get treated in the way that you present yourself and if you come across confident comfortable in your in yourself comfortable with your disability people around you will be comfortable with it as well um and sport was a massive part of that for me because it was something you know that I knew I was good at uh, something I had you know medals you had proof that I was good at it um, and it really gave me that confidence um in life in general so actually I think I think the confidence came from the sport. Um, I wasn't necessarily, I wouldn't call myself a really sort of confident outgoing person all the time um, in, in my personal life. Um, but sports definitely helped with that massively.
Absolutely. I mean, I think if, if you can get a young person with a disability involved with exercise and sport early, it really helps them because physically they just feel a lot better. It doesn't mean, you know, that, that they're going to go on to be professional athletes, Paralympic athletes necessarily, and they don't have to be, you know, that it's not necessarily, that has to be the end goal because not, not everyone sort of loves sport and, and wants to do it. But exercise in general is obviously something that's, that's very important. I think now that... Um, Paralympics has grown so much if I think back to Beijing when I started there weren't many sort of professional setups the athletes were generally amateur athletes working other jobs now they're all professional they play full-time they're paid to play um, and the opportunities for disabled children are out there and they now have those role models um, you know people like Johnny Peacock and Ellie Simmons and all those guys who are kind of well-known national figures and I think that's a massive thing that's changed in the last 10 years because now when you see disabled children I think in general their their role models are often those Paralympic athletes because they're the disabled people say in Britain that are in the limelight and they're the people that people know about and it's great you know I think there's we've seen the the amount of inclusion go up massively our performance squad um, and kind of pathway set up for getting young people in they're much busier they've got a lot more people uh, involved I think it's a really, really difficult one because obviously at school, if you only have a few disabled people, say when you're doing PE or, you know, there, well, that's when sport and exercise kind of probably starts for a lot of, a lot of kids. Um, and it can be very, very difficult to, to include them because, you know, just think practically for a PE teacher, if you've only got one, put one child with a disability, you're not going to change the whole class to fit that one child. Um, I think that, it's it's tough I think I think it needs to come from especially from the parents I think they need to encourage and and go and look elsewhere sometimes maybe not necessarily school there's lots of clubs around lots of different sports around that are open to disabled people and run disabled classes um, and the para kind of set up as well they do lots of kind of work within schools now going in trying to find young athletes at a very early age that's like the next step I think for for Paralympic sport in general is to catch these people really early whether that's yeah at school or in hospital if they've had accidents or or anything like that I think I think it has to come from 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 the parents and from the school you know it has to be a combination of those two things encouraging them and showing you know disabled kids that they can do it you know figuring out ways that they can do things figuring out sports that they're good at um because you do have to think about the disability you know if you're in a wheelchair you're not going to be playing football um, but there's, doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that there's not loads of things out there for you that you can do. Um, I mean, from a, from a disabled point of view, I just hope it keeps growing and growing. I think that it, it's moving forward at a very, very fast pace. Our Olympic setups are getting, are getting better and better. Um, but I think on a grassroots level, I think I hope eventually... Uh, that there'll be you know specific clubs set up for disabled or physically impaired people places they can go which are places of safety um where they can go and they can go and train they can try different sports they can do exercise but not from a medical point of view if that makes sense because obviously there are centers for rehab for all this but i think the the the, the key thing is to move away from that message that that it's just about rehabilitation it's more just about them doing sport and enjoying sports and having a safe place to do that. Because I think it can be quite intimidating for young disabled athletes or young disabled people to go into able-bodied clubs and try and do the sports with the able-bodied people because that can be really, really tough and it can be quite disheartening, especially if at the start, if you're if you're not so good or you're finding things that, that are difficult and that you might retreat into yourself and not really wanting to do that. So I think in general, um, I hope for kind of increased awareness uh, that that people are just more aware of how important sport and exercise are, is are for disabled people, um, and then to set up some kind of like sort of grassroots system where you have places where they can go to try loads of different things and to just be involved with exercise in general with with a bit of supervision. I think that would be kind of the ideal scenario.